The Arditi were Italian special forces during the First World War. Ardito means he who acts with courage, with audacity, intrepid, courageous, daring. The members of the so-called death companies are considered the precursors of the Arditi. They consisted of special patrols of the engineers or infantry used for cutting or blasting enemy fences, wearing the heavy Farina armor, which, however, was easily penetrated. After a few unsuccessful experiments, it was decided to set aside this solution. In July 1916, the Supreme Command introduced an arm badge for the Arditi soldiers. It was awarded with a certificate and granted with strict evaluation criteria to the volunteers who participated more than once in dangerous operations in areas under intense enemy fire. The number of awarded could not be higher than one of the 20th organic forces of the unit. The badge consists of the Royal Monogram VE over the Savoy Knot. It was intended exclusively as a reward and indication of the soldier to be held up as an example, and there was an express prohibition on creating special cause. This was the genesis of the word Ardito in the collective imagination. The only thing that the death companies and the Arditi soldiers have in common with the future Arditi of the assault units is their daring heart that mocks death. Otherwise, their tasks, tactics, structure and training were completely different. In 1917, following proposals and studies by some generals aware of the need to use troops that went beyond the classic formula of the frontal assault on the enemy lines softened by the artillery, they decided to test a specially constituted unit commanded by Major Giuseppe Bassi. The newly formed assault units therefore developed as a corps in their own right. Their task was no longer to open the way for the infantry towards the enemy lines, but the total conquest of the latter using new tactics. The soldiers were volunteers, but as the number of units increased, they began to be selected from among the most experienced and courageous soldiers. After assessing suitability through tests of strength, dexterity and cold blood, the soldiers were trained in the use of the weapons supplied, in innovative assault tactics, and in hand-to-hand -hand combat, with or without weapons, all supported by continuous athletic training. Contrary to the legend, spread by the Arditi themselves, convicted felons were not allowed into the force. To fight more effectively, each soldier needed to develop appropriate physical, technical and psychological preparation, which is why the training was particularly intensive and realistic, carried out on typical hills, very similar to those on the front with the use of weapons with live ammunition. The assault tactics of the Arditi were divided into three phases. The first consisted of advancing under Allied fire and initiating a surprise attack with hand grenades, daggers and flamethrowers. The second phase consisted of penetrating the depths of the enemy ranks to stop them from settling into a second defensive line. The third phase consisted of an attack on the flanks of the defensive line. Noi correvamo sempre avanti quando l'ufficiale ha detto avanti, avanti a noi, perché non si diceva Savoia. Gli Arditi dicevano a noi e via su. The Arditi acted in small assault units and were distributed in tactical pairs of soldiers to favor their flexibility of maneuver. They were made up of men chosen by ties of kinship, friendship, common citizenship, or mutual sympathy. The trenches were kept occupied until the infantry arrived, so the Aditi were also trained in using the enemy's weapons. Unlike the rest of the army who wore a jacket with a closed collar, the Aditi were equipped with the open-collared jacket of the Bersaglieri cyclists to facilitate ventilation and mobility. The Arditi from the infantry had black collar patches called two-pointed black flames. The Arditi coming from the Bersaglieri kept their crimson flames. Those from the Alpini kept their green flames. Some special and rare cases saw yellow flames from the Italian finance police and blue flames from the navy. The symbol of the Arditi was the dagger with the writing FERT, Savoy motto on the guard, and surrounded by a laurel branch and an oak branch, tied together by a rope forming a Savoy knot. The salute of the Arditi consisted of raising the dagger high with the right hand, and it should be specified that it has nothing to do with the fascist salute, despite the similarity. The typical equipment of the Arditi was constituted by the dagger for hand-to-hand -hand combat and hand grenades. The type of hand grenade most used by the Arditi was the Tevenot firecracker, as it did not have excessive power and could therefore be thrown in motion just in front of the assault wave without injuring the attacker, with the advantage of being very noisy to therefore stun or cause fear in opponents, who confused it with a normal hand grenade. Per l'assalto non era la SIPE. La SIPE era una bomba diversa. 
era il Tevenò chiamato, come, non so, come i barattoli della birra di adesso. Barattoli di birra, sì. ecco, e lì c'era una scuoletta, che è una linguetta e si lanciava. Per, e si, andare avanti, andare avanti tutto, ma noi avevamo coraggio, <ride> molto coraggio. Other weapons used were machine guns, flamethrowers, pistols and muskets. Given the narrow spaces of the trenches during the assaults, the bayonets became cumbersome and were replaced by daggers obtained from a readaptation of the old Vetterli bayonets. Dagger fencing is the pride of the Arditi. In 1918, Lieutenant Gino Gorby published a manual for assault units entitled Dagger Fencing for the Arditi. It consists of the guard position, Footwork consisting of steps, jumps and pivot steps, two defences, three attacks and a dodge. There is a total of six simple and essential techniques that effectively distill the complexity of combat. The small number of manoeuvres allows them to be mastered quickly. Their simplicity makes them easy to perform and the accuracy with which they have been selected results in extreme effectiveness. Italy has a rich tradition of armed and dagger combat and many of the Arditi were already initiated into the art of the knife. The Arditi were also trained in unarmed hand-to-hand -hand combat by studying forms of jiu-jitsu and judo adapted to their type of warfare and with Italian influence. One of the instructors was Giovanni Racchi, who published two books in 1918 to illustrate some techniques also studied by the Arditi. I cannot show the original images, but will use similar ones from various old books or manuscripts. Internal defense from a dagger strike from above, blocking with the left forearm with a hand with fingers extended. Follow up by grabbing the wrist and sweeping the opponent while performing a web of hand strike to the throat, the opponent's arm is then pinned with the knee of the same leg that swept, while the foot of the other crushes the armed hand, and the right hand strangles the opponent's throat. External defense from a dagger strike from above, blocking with the left forearm and the fingers together and extended. Follow up by moving externally behind the opponent's leg while grabbing the wrist and throwing him with a cutting blow on the throat. The enemy arm is then placed in leverage on the thigh. Block a dagger blow to the body from the inside. Grab the opponent's right shoulder with the right hand and pull him down. Grab the armed arm with both hands and put it in leverage while locking the head between the legs. Defend an overhead stab by grabbing the enemy's arm with your left hand, locking it into a wrist lock in a figure four grip. This technique was also performed on the inside. Defend against a knife threat by quickly reaching down to grab the nearest leg throwing the opponent similarly to the photo, but by pushing with the open hand on the chest. Against the musket with bayonet, rotate it to make the opponent's arms cross, turn, and trip with the leg. Against the musket with bayonet, grab the rifle and deliver a front kick to the abdomen while pulling the musket towards you. Other essential strikes used by the Arditi were the right punch to the stomach and the chop to the throat. Some also used various types of straight kicks to the legs. The motivation for Ettore Viola's gold medal for military valor makes it clear what an Ardito was capable of thanks to his training in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Left alone, surrounded by his adversaries and taken prisoner, after three hours he freed himself with lightning-fast and violent hand-to-hand -hand combat from the escort that accompanied him and returned to our lines with admirable enthusiasm. Initially, the Italian commands were unable to integrate the rapidity of penetration of the Arditi with the movement of the other infantry units, obtaining scarce results, but with the maturation of experience, they managed to exploit the potential of the assault units in a more significant way. The Arditi participated in numerous battles. Their most notable feats are certainly the conquest of Kolmoskin, which was conquered in 20 minutes, 10 of climbing and 10 of fighting under enemy machine gun fire, and the breaking of the Piave line, which allowed the final victory over the Austro-Hungarian armies in November 1918. It has been estimated that one in ten Arditi died throughout the war. Avuto mai paura? Eh, no, paura no, perché noi non lo so cosa avevamo. Noi a scuola, fin da scuola, amavamo la patria. E anzi, anche i genitori ci avevano insegnato a voler bene alla patria. E allora andavamo, noi non avevamo paura, per niente. A few months after the end of the war, with the demobilization of the army, it was decided to disband the assault units. The reasons were summarized by General Francesco Severio Grazioli, one of the fathers of the Aditi. Once the war has ceased and the opportunity to show off their audacity, to gain loot, to show off their exploits, has ceased, their chaotic and exuberant nature will either be lost, and then they will become ordinary infantry which would not justify the external forms and their own official name, or it will persist 
and then it will be extreme but difficult for anyone to contain it, to avoid deplorable, disciplinary infractions and perhaps crimes, which would tarnish their own glorious reputation which was formed during the war. Subsequently, several Aditi sided with the nascent Fasci di Combattimento, and the symbols and memory of the assault units such as black flames, daggers, and hand grenades were exploited by fascism, which is why in their homeland the memory of the Arditi remained obscured for a long time by the Damnatio Memoriae of the post-World War II period. However, it should be remembered that in 1922, the Arditi del Popolo rose in opposition to the fascist Arditi. They were an anti-fascist paramilitary group made up of ex-Arditi as Argo Secondari, but also other veterans of the war, and had members among anarchists, communists, and socialists. Their motto was, from nothing we arose. Perhaps the event with the greatest resonance was the defense of Parma from the fascist squadrismo in 1922. Around 10,000 fascist squadristi had to give up conquering the city after five days of clashes with a large group of socialists, anarchists, and communists, commanded by the leaders of the Arditi del Popolo Antonio Thierry and Guido Picelli. The Arditi del Popolo were unable to strengthen themselves in the fight against fascism because they were not supported by any political party, given that they did not see them as a reliable instrument that they could use for their own interests. It is difficult to say whether, with the right support, the Arditi del Popolo could have stopped the rise of fascism. Some members later were part of the Italian resistance movement. Some fought in the Spanish Civil War. The traditions of the Arditi are today kept alive by the 9th Paratroopers Assault Regiment, Col Moschin, which takes its name from the feet of the Arditi of the 9th Assault Department. Voi avevate un inno che diceva Mamma non piangere. Come diceva che tipo? Eh, io ve lo ricordo. La vuol cantare per noi? <laughs> ma la voce non ce l'ho, ma... Sì. Dunque... Mamma non piangere se c'è l'avanzata, tuo figlio è forte, forte.